Recording in progress. I am back. I know I said five, but I took seven minutes. We're back. Everybody back in the room? Yes, I'm here. So, Duncan? All right, so we are out here. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> do I start on the positive or the negative note? Which, which one do I want to start with? Right. So we can look serious today. So let me start today <laughs> with the positive. All right, it's really positive or negative. I start, I, I must apologize. I think I need to start there. I owe you an apology. And the apology is that I did not mark your last on time. So if you're going to mark me down this semester, that is one score I will accept. Huh? I did mark your laps on time. And if I had, then I, I, I wanted to see some better grades. Maybe I'm just being a little greedy because of how I, the, you know, the, the, the high um, the pedestal that I've put you for on. Um, you know, I, I, I don't expect anything below certain things. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So when I see grades that may end up in the 70s and the 60s, I don't want that. That's not what I should be seeing from labs with your students, right? But I, I'm going to take some of the blame. Um, you know. That said, um, in, in marking a couple of the, the first lab, which was the um, early fundamentals, I realized that there were some things that really needed clarity, which I don't think you all... Um, some things that I, I don't think you understand the, the, the core, the gravamen of what is actually, um, or what was actually being taught. It improved a little bit with the, with the third lab, but there were still some weak areas. Um, and so I toyed with the idea, note, I toyed with the idea of pushing back the, the submission date for the, for the project. All right. Um, I don't know. W would that help you? You think that would help you? By the way, have you seen the labs? Have you seen the labs? Have you? Have you seen the mark labs? Yes. No. Am I on mute? No, sir. No, sir. Um, I think just. Well, I checked school ID just before class and I saw just one, the final lab that you marked. Okay, well, yeah, because you submitted for both yourself and Mr. Buchanan. So Buchanan would have the first one, so he can forward that to you. Okay. All right? And I think uh, Mr. Johnson submitted for both Duncan and himself. But the, the comments are there. Um, as I said, you know, some of the things. But then again, all four of you are doing the project. So whilst I was a little concerned, I realized that one of the groups in terms of the second lab had a much better understanding of, of the material. So it is my hope that when the four of you come together, um, that cross-fertilization, I suppose, Will, 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 will help to benefit the group, all right? So, but I don't know when I enter this democratic realm, you know, but let me stay in there. So I'm giving you the option now to vote as to whether or not um, pushing back the, the submission of the project would, would be of benefit to you. So if it would be of benefit, just raise your hand. All right, you take two laps, so it won't be of benefit. All right. Where are we? I was looking for the hand raise option. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, so I put it out there again. If it will be of benefit that I push it back, raise your hand, please. So wait, is only Miss Gray have hand? All right, so. Um, next week is the last week of classes, all right? And um, is next week is Easter, right? Is that go? Next um, week is Easter. Next week Friday, I believe, sir. Yeah. And then after that, you have the you have study and then you come back for assessments, right? Yes, sir. So we have a class on Wednesday. This next week Wednesday, yes, sir. Next week Tuesday, we have a class next week Tuesday, right? Yes, sir. All right, all right. All right. We won't be long this afternoon. I keep saying that, and then I still use it two hours. But um, let us see what happens today. So what I will do, um, let us say, since it's since it's only one group presentation, what I will do is that next Wednesday in your final class. No, but I need to see the document before. So submit the document to me next week, Tuesday evening. Yeah? So I'm going to shift the submission date from Friday until Tuesday. And then on Wednesday afternoon, in that one-hour session, you do the presentation. Oh, that's all. That's all helpful? Yes, sir. If it doesn't help, you know, tell me. So wait, everybody else, Mike, not working. Is all the mystery one of Mike? All right. So Tuesday. So Tuesday, six o'clock. Um, that's when I'm gonna set the, the, the submission, all right? And then on Wednesday you do the presentation. Now let me let me just let for the presentation. And this was a missing element from lab number two. You gave me a lot of tables. You give and one group gave me some graphs. When you're showing coordination, that don't really help me. Now. What I would prefer or what I'm going to need to see um, would be the, the, uh, the network diagrams showing the outages. So you would, have, you would have been able to indicate where the fault is on the system. You with me? So you would have simulated the fault. And of course, you'd have gone through the process of uh, protection coordination. And once the once the the, uh, the the fault is cleared, then the network, of course, would have shown the areas that would have been grayed out, meaning that they would have been taken out of the system. And in doing so, you are then able to show that discrimination has taken place. All right. So for the presentation uh, next week, what I expect is that you would have a live demonstration of ERACs in terms of the different um, fault positions. Oh, am I clear? So you have to come with demonstration. There are some, remember now, there are some relays that are not available in ERACs, which I ask that you provide the full description in terms of operation and the, 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 the settings. You know, I know there are no differential relays there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but for, for the coordination, I know you have, um, it's not a radial because you now have the hope station. So you'll have to show that when you have the fault and hope, it's not going to feed back onto the other line in terms of the West King's Olds, et cetera, line. All right? So come prepared to do those demonstrations. Um, and in that, in that session, I will also assess 
your 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 um, your skill with Erax, and then that grade will go to your lab. Okay, you know, there's a twenty percent that is not graded as yet. All right, and that is use of software. So you have that twenty percent that goes on top of what you already have. I make myself clear. Yes, sir. Well, you are behaving as if it's Christmas. Everybody does sing in silent night to me tonight. But, right. So let, I'm going to say it again. And I'm going to ask if you're here. But I'm just going to assume so you're here. So come. I want to put the, the, the submission Tuesday evening. Wednesday at 2 o'clock, we'll have the presentations. Um, for those presentations, I want to see the simulations. Because I'm going to assess you on the labs, I also want you to have um, the, the, you can just load the three, the two networks for the labs on the, on the system. All right, on whichever computer you're using. So I will allow you to share screen and we'll be able to see um, the simulation and we go through that. All right, so I'll put you in a waiting room and yeah, all of that fancy jazz. So that's one hour of oral examination. When you won't have the option but to speak to me. All right. Um, as usual, um, you'll have 15 minutes to do your presentation, making sure everybody get a piece of the pie to tell me about the project. And then um, we, you know, individuals will feel questions. And that's how you're going to get your project great in terms of the presentation. Um, I hope, I believe I did make, uh, provide you with the rubric for the presentation. You can go to Schoology, look on the, uh, the module outline, and the rubric should be there. All right? All right. So, as I said, we won't be long today. We, this is the last topic on the, on the syllabus. Uh, we're looking at... Um, um, we're looking at generators today. All right. So in terms of generator pr protection, uh, a generator is a generator is a generator. We know how they work. You have spent quite a bit of time in your machines looking at generators. And the, the key to protecting generators, one, you know, how important is the unit itself? And two, um, you need to understand or appreciate the technology behind the operation of the generator, okay? So as I usually say to students, when it comes to um, my, my standby generator at home, the most protection it gets is a piece of metal that I was able to drive into a little, a little dirt outside the room. I think it must be in the room also. But anyway, that's the that's level of protection it gets. So apart from the earthing, that's it. Not more. I suppose that's what it, why, why it isn't working anymore, but um, that's all the protection it had. All right? So the, the generator protection is going to be dependent on the level of importance that is attached to it. Right? and also the technology um, that is used, right? Um, so depend, if you go into an engineering facility, um, <clears throat> even in telecoms, because as you, as you would appreciate, in the telecommunication industry, even when we have power outages, you still have, um, you still have telephone service, yes? because the telephone system is, is run um, using batteries. Yeah? But those batteries have to remain fully charged or properly charged. So even if you have outages, you're going to have a standby generator um, available to provide the charge to, the, to the, 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 the battery system. Okay? Now, I mentioned that to simply to say that the importance of a generating unit is not just as it relates to um, power, the power sector, 
but you know, manufacturing, telecoms, you name it, right? Um, the, 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 the use and importance of the machine is going to dictate the level of protection. All right? Okay. Um, so in terms of the power system, since we are dealing with power system protection, the generator using in, um, in your power system is at the heart of the operation um, of, of, of the, the, the system. Um, you, can, you can have, you know, lines being destroyed physically, and within a couple of days, you can get that back into place. You have a transformer that, you know, get, that gets damaged. Uh, remember when we were looking at, uh, you know, substations, we spoke about even having a mobile substation. So you can actually even bring in a transformer on the back of a truck or a trailer and have it inserted into the system while you replace the damaged unit. The generator is not so easy, all right? So it's, it's by far one of the more critical components within the, within the, um, the, the, the power system, all right? And so the level of protection applied to it is going to be quite extensive, all right? Um, just listing here some of the issues um, that can impact your generator. Eh? We're talking about insulation failure, um, overloads, eh? unbalanced loading, rotor faults, loss of excitation, and obviously if we're dealing with a um, synchronous machine. Prime mover failure. Eh? So if your turbine... If there's a, an issue with your turbine, then you need to know that. Because if the tur if there's a problem with the turbine, then the generator um, market won't happen uh, immediately, but the generator then will start operating like a motor. So instead of su supplying power to the system, it starts to absorb power from the system. Okay? Lubrication failure. Um, overspeeding, which now... Um, speaks to quality of supply. Yeah? Um, vibration. Well, I said rotor faults. This is more electrical faults on a rotor. Um, the excessive vibration would, would come from um, physical damage to the, to the rotor. So mechanical faults on a, on a rotor will cause that vibration. So, you know, it's, it's, it's always rather interesting when we speak to um, excessive vibration because if you go into a power house, right, if you're going into a generating facility, um, it's not exactly quiet or neither is it um, still. Right? But we, we do note that given the speed at which the rotor um, is turning, that any, any damage to that rotor, even a hairline fracture, will cause um, vibration above the normal, all right? And so we would know that those problems exist. Um, um, well, I have to give credence to the fact that you're all very young, so you wouldn't know or wouldn't um, be familiar we had a significant outage some years ago where we lost, what, 30 megawatts because of a problem like this, all right? The, one of the generators at JEP uh, was damaged, and they, they, they had de detected the, the vibration, but for whatever reason, it was not acted upon, and, you know, we lost that, that um, generating unit, and so we were struggling in terms of um, power generation for quite a while. All right, so I went through all of that talking because I know that you were writing the stuff. So these are the many issues that can confront you for a generator, which you have to then um, speak to. But our focus this, this afternoon is going to look at the an electrical issue, yes, where we have um, the types of faults that we mentioned um, in, in power systems, right? So we have the 
generator having a neutral point, okay? Um, and it is usually earthed to facilitate the protection of the stator windings, all right? Um, now, again, if you go back to your, 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 your power systems, and, um, well, not, let's not even go back that far. If you recall the first lab you did when you were looking at the fault analysis, all right? So you're looking at the faults in that lab. One of the tests that you did was to change the earthing impedance for the generator. You recall that? Oh, sorry, I forgot you're not talking. To yes. Me. But anyway... Um, the earthing impedance for the generator, once you put that earthing impedance in, you are able to reduce the fall current. And you saw that physical reduction in terms of the, 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 the fall current on the system. Um, no, that's what we are referring to here. All right. And, you know, we are limiting the current because, one, um, we know that the generator. Is the is the unit or the, the the equipment that produces all the fault current within the system? And I say that well, I say that advisedly because your synchronous motor can do the same. But anyway, but in the case of the, the fault on a machine, we are seeking to limit the amount of current that passes through it, right? To reduce, if not eliminate, the possibility of uh, damage to the core. But while I am doing this, while I am limiting the current, going back to what you, 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 you went through for lab two, when you looked at, not only lab two, but you know, we were looking at overcurrent relays, we, we saw that the higher the current, right, the faster you had operation for your inverse relays. So if I'm going to reduce the current, the fault current, it means that I'm going to reduce the level of responsiveness um, of the protection system to the fault. So we have to find a way of countering that natural phenomenon. You with me? So if I put in, I'm putting in the earthing resistor because I want to limit the amount of current. But if I put in the earthing resistor and limit the amount of current, it is reducing the, the responsiveness of the protection system because I want as large a current um, going to the protection, you know, so the protection will operate quickly. So part of the discussions this, this afternoon, this evening, um, is, is about how do we treat with that? How do we ensure that um, we can uh, meditate against that? All right? All right, so, all right, not sure that that still obtains, but anyway, we try to limit it to about five amperes. Don't, don't write that down and take it as gospel. Okay, so the other methods that are employed to reduce this current, because, you know, remember, we are protecting this, this um, generator, all right? would be to earth it through a VT. We have already established that VTs are expensive. Well, there are some other electrical issues with VTs, the using VTs, and we'll just mention them quickly, but one method, earthing through a VT. Or secondly, using a high impedance earthing transformer. And this is the one that we are gonna be focusing on. Right? So earthing the generator through an earthing transformer. So again, keep in mind what the objectives are. One, we want to reduce the, the, the current passing through the generator under fault. But two, we want to ensure that a meaningful, um, a current of meaningful magnitude reaches the relay for operation. All right, so that's the balance we are going to try to achieve in our um, discussion today. As I said, using the, the VTs, a 
apart from it being expensive, which we have already spoken to when we're looking at VTs and CTs, um, if we use the VT or in using the VT, um, there are some issues as it relates to over voltages um, that will occur that makes the method less than ideal. So it's not that it can't be used, but you know there are some costs associated. So for the most part, you may then um, end up seeing um, the the earth the high impedance earthing transformer being applied. All right. So in a sense, how I treated my my generator at home wasn't too bad. All right. So I, I stick something in the earth and hope that it got to good earth. All right. And then connect it to the to the to the star point. But you know, or to the earthing log. Um, I certainly was not incorporating any resistance to try and reduce the, the, the fault impedance, but you know, if that happens, then so be it. All right. Okay, and this is just continuing to um, speak to the, the VT, use of the VT. All right, so we're now gonna focus on the method of using the um, earthing transformer. And we are using a transformer, and if you note the range that I'm putting here, which is quite significant, all right? We're talking about five to 100 kV. Now I'm gonna declare my hand from early we're going to go through some calculations. Um, it is not for you to be able to um, reproduce these numbers. But what I want you to focus on while I go through this are the principles that need to be considered. All right? Don't have to worry, worry about whether or not I can calculate this or you know, reproduce this. I want you to focus on the principles being applied. So in using the earthing transformer, um, the, 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 the rating of the transformer, as we said, between 5 and 100 kV. And the, the, the primary principle is that we are going to have a transformer whose primary is energized by the earth lead yeah. While the secondary, so the primary of that transformer is energized by the earth lead. So that earth lead that is coming from the from the um, from the generator. Yeah, we earth earth the generator at the star point. We have that earth. The fall current that flows through that earth lead will be the primary current for the earthing transformer. Do you with me? And the secondary of the same earthing transformer, I will give it a rate, the, 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 the rating here, 100 to 500 volts. It's passed through a resistor. Are connected to our resistor. So we energize the primary using the output from the or the current through the earthing lead. Yes. And the secondary, we connect it across our resistor. So all I'm going to talk about this, this afternoon is how we go about determining the magnitude of the, the transformer, the size of the transformer, and also how we go about selecting this suitable resistance. All right, that's the objective. So this is the setup. Here is our generator. This is my generator transformer, all right? And down here, 
That is the earth in transform. So we have the earth point, star, and it goes through. That is the primary. So the primary is there. The secondary is then connected to the resistor. And across that resistor, we have our ground detector relay. All right, so we have this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm just going to talk now about um, how we go about determining R and T. And I'm going to introduce some things. As I said, don't worry too much about the numbers. Just try and appreciate the principle. All right. Okay, so let's go. So the value of the resistor that we have there is such that it does not exceed the impedance at system frequency of the total capacitance of the three phases. All right, so we have some leakage capacitance here, all right? And that total capacitance is made up of, um, well, there are several considerations for that leakage capacitance. So the resistor is such that it does not exceed the impedance at system frequency of the total capacitance of the three phases. In other words, in other words, fault current. must not exceed the residual capacitance current. So if the, if the resistive portion and the capacitive portion are considered to be in parallel, yeah, then the capacitive current must not exceed the resistive current. And don't worry, my wife give me this big old something to drink. So if you see it, it's very hard. So now you understand why I have no beer. Because when I get these big things to drink, what am I supposed to do? Pretend as if it's nice and neat? I can't. Anyway. Um, for the transformer, we have to ensure that the transformer does not saturate for obvious reasons. So we don't want the transformer to saturate. Because obviously if it saturates, it means that the output voltage across the the resistor would be less than what should be reflected there. Huh? So we are, we, are, we, are, we are using the resistor to ensure that the leakage um, current 
by way of the capacitance uh, does not exceed the current through, through the resistor. And we're also going to select the transformer. We're going to select a value for the transformer to ensure that the transformer will not saturate during fault. And I think we have spoken about saturation um, enough. And um, as pointed out here, we are able to avoid saturation if the knee point is equal to 1.3 times the generator rated line voltage. And you'll see that factor um, coming up in the, in the calculations. All right, just remember this 1.3. Now, the question is, why 1.3? Why not say 2? And to be on the safe side, as I've, I hope I have said it in the past, um, you want to, your purpose, your purpose going out there to, to work is to save the company money. If the company cannot save your salary by virtue of what you bring to the table, then they have no purpose to have, uh, in having you on staff. So whatever your salary, make sure you are able to save the company a few multiples of that by your output. Yeah. Um, one Jewish writer, I forgot, I, I forget his name. He says that you must consider yourself a business. So when you leave UTEC, you'll be a business. And when you go into the company, what you're doing is selling them your service. Huh? So if you're not able to ensure, so in saving money, we could have said two times. Yeah? But two times means that you simply buy a large transformer. It won't saturate. But you would have spent more than you needed to spend. Are you with me? So we are using a factor that will achieve the non-saturation. Yes? But the, the, the unit you buy would be cheaper. Yes, Mr. Buchanan. You had a question? Um, Mark, uh, mine was in a little trouble. Hmm. Okay. All right. So going back to the to the network, uh, we have the the if we have the fault, we have the earth fault current flowing, energizes my transformer. Yes, remember, we have a small current over here. Based on the, the voltage on this side, or no, let me not use use over there. Let's start on this side, we know that the voltage on the secondary is between 100 and 500. In the scheme of things, that is low, right? So if you have low voltage on this side, it means that you're going to have a higher current over here. And that high current will give us <coughs> um, a voltage across this, which will then um, operate our, our relay. All right? Okay. So note it's a voltage measurement relay. So what we are looking at is a voltage across the resistor. That was dry. <laughs>
All right, so here are the requirements. This is what this is this is what I'm, I'm, I'm protecting. We have a generator rated output 120 megawatts. We have no such in Jamaica, but you know, we have 120 megawatts. Terminal voltage 13.8k. Maximum over voltage 18k. I know that 18k um, would be approximately 1.3 times the 13.8. All right. The winding capacitance is 0.22 microfarad per phase. For the generator connections, we have points. We have one nanofarad per phase. And for the generator transformer, the rated voltage one forty three point six thirteen point eight kV, and the winding capacitance point zero six zero zero six microfarad. So. We have capacitance as a result of the windings for the generator. We have capacitance for the connections. And we have that connecting to the, the for the transformer. Now, I want you to take careful note, the winding capacitance of the, uh, the generator um, is you know, several times higher than the others, and for obvious reasons because the windings would, of course, be insulated, right? and they are in close proximity. Um, I know this is sort of you know, going off script a bit, but you, you can use the same principle as to the high capacitance for your cable vis-a-vis -vis your line. Yeah. All right? All right. Oh, sorry. You have this? Yes, sir. Okay, so the total capacitance would be that for the winding, the, con the connections, and the capacitor. Right? We consider them to be in parallel, so we just add them. And from this, we can find the, the capacitive reactants. So the total capacitive reactants, based on these connections, at system frequency. Yeah? Oh, my apology. I forgot that part. All the values that we had given were per phase. So for the three phases, and so we get 0.681. And then we can find the equivalent reactants. Right? And that gives us 4.68 kilo ohms. Now, what we had said regarding the resistor is that it should not exceed the equivalent the reactants from the equivalent capacitance. So why is it we can't exceed it? We can certainly make it equal, and that will make our, our calculation simpler. So we have that net reactance. Remember. Students, I'm, I'm not asking you to replicate these, these numbers. I just understand the principle. Yeah? Okay. So the, the, the corresponding current then would be 1.7. 
and that's the that's the modulus, all right? Which means therefore that the actual fault current would be 1.7 plus J 1.7. Remember, we need a recapacitance, so that would have been R minus J XL. Now we are not using it as a complex number. What we are looking at is that you have a component going through the the, uh, the resistance and a component through the capacitance. Are you with me? So we have the resistance, the imaginary for the capacitance. So we are not connecting them as a single impedance. Right. So we have them equal. If we have those two values equal, we are saying that the, the, the magnitude of the current would be the same. All right. Okay, with that, we now come to the earthing transformer. And uh, just you just stick a pin with respect to the current, we're gonna come back to that. But let's take a look at the earthing transformer. And we go back in terms of the, 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 the requirements for um, against saturation. So the knee point voltage of the earthing transformer should be at in the volts. All right. Now, now, you are aware that you have your, your earth fault. And you would have seen this whether we were doing um, the calculations or in your labs. You would have seen that the system voltage falls under fault. Is that good? So even the you have that voltage falling. And so I'm telling you that, you know, it may fall in the region 13.8 over root three, give us the eight volts. And the field conditions we are talking about here is that same 1.3, that multiplier that we are using. So the eight times the 1.3 gives you the 10.4 kilovolts. All right? So that is what's on the, the primary of the earthing transformer. I know we're going, we know we're gonna just play with the numbers. All right. But the key here, the key here, um, ladies and gentlemen, in choosing a transformer, the, what we are looking at so far, the key is that the transformer should not saturate. That's the key, All right? That's a key principle. And to do that, we go through this process. Um, so in terms of, in terms of the, the, the neutral current, yeah, remember now that we had, we had that at 1.7. So based on the, Based on the um, the change in terms of the, 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 the voltage, based on that 1.3 factor, it means that the current will also have to increase by that factor. All right? So we get the 2.2. Yes, and we have the voltage. And that gives us the 22.9 K. All 
Okay. Sir, can you can go back to that last line? I get I get that. You can hear me? Yeah, man. Yeah, I get so that. We, we have the 1.3 ratio uh -huh. being multiplied by the 1.7 to the 2.2. And what I'm not getting is the, the maximum loading here. Yes, this is now a bit of rate thing on the trans the loading on the transformer. Because remember all of this. Remember I said that this 10.4 is on the primary. Yes. All right? This 1.7. We had the 1.7, which was for the resistive part. And the, the 1.7 for the leakage capacitance. So we are saying that the, the current would also increase by that factor. So the load, the, the KVA load, would now be the 2.2 times the 10.4. So this would be the transformer, the loading on the transformer. Un understood, understood. Yeah, but as I said, we're still going to play with the numbers. So this is going to change. Still going to change. Right. So this is the maximum possible loading. And remember, well, not remember, this maximum possible loading takes into consideration that 1.3 uh, multiplier. All right? Therefore, can we go again? And now is where we start playing with it. So we talk about this 30 seconds rating for maximum duty. All right? Um, and we also talk about, you know, these are some um, empirical uh, findings in terms of testing your transformers. So one, a 30 second rating for maximum duty which is specified, is regarded as adequate. Two, it has been shown that overload of six times the continuous rating can be applied for this time. So in other words, if I have a transformer, let us say it is, it is 10 kVA, what we are saying is that we can have 60 kVA loading on the transformer, right, for up to 30 seconds. So the transformer is rated at 10, but I can have six times its rating, yeah, for 30 seconds. So it means, therefore, that, I mean, given what we would expect as far as the operation of our um, our release concern. We know that in the scheme of things, we would never have a fault on a generator for 30 seconds. Are you with me? So, although we specify this, are we specifying this? These are just the, thick, the, the, the worst, the absolute worst case scenarios. Even if your, your primary protection fails under these circumstances, there will be other, um, other, other parts of the protection system which would have operated um, outside of that 30 seconds. Because we know that within all system protection, we are dealing with milliseconds in terms of operation. So 30 seconds is our lifetime. All right? I see you knitting your brow, Mr. Bukana. Oh, it's not by no, sir. No, sir. I understand what you're saying. You're saying that it's the worst case scenario because pulse normal clear much faster. So this would be in the most extreme of circumstances. Exactly. So it means, therefore, that I can safely put a transformer with a loading six times its rating. So we calculated the worst case, which was 22.9, right? Yeah. 
Now, this maximum loading or this maximum is based on the maximum output current and the maximum EMF which the transformer can produce. But if you recall, all right, take that, take that, take this. Before I go any further. See the face of my savior. <laughs> All right. So if you recall, the, the voltage that when we calculated that twenty two point nine, right? The voltage that we looked at was the normal voltage. But remember, we said that it can carry a maximum of 18. All right. Yeah, Mr. Johnson? Okay. So, in terms of the, the maximum voltage, because we calculated the maximum current. But as I said, when we looked at the voltage, that voltage collapse, we looked at the, um, the, 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 the normal terminal voltage, which was the 13.8. But we know that it can go up to 18. So we are using that maximum. So it's not the 22 that we are rating it on. Right? So it will be 2.2 times 18 over 6. So that would be um, 39 point something. All right, 36, so it would be 39.6. We divide that by 6, we get 6.6. .6. So in other words, I can have a 6.6 .6 kVA transformer. Um, as my rating transformer, because I can load it six times its rating for up to 30 seconds. Well, guess what? You can get a 6.6 .6 kV, kV transformer. So again, you're going to have to compromise. You're going to have to find something that's appropriate. And so you, 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 you choose a standard value of, say, 10 kV. All right. So if I use my 10 kV, all right, for the for the 5 kV using that same 39.9, which is approximately 40. Yes, if I were to use the 5 kV, then I would have to derate the time to 15 seconds. And this would now be an overload factor of eight. So this is information that you have. So what's the key takeaway here? In selecting the, the transformer in terms of its, its capacity, you'll be looking at the maximum possible voltage. You'll be looking at the maximum current. You'll be using or taking into consideration any derating factors that are applicable. So for the six times, you can do 30 seconds. Yeah? For the eight times, you can do 15 seconds. Maybe if you go to 10, it might drop you to 10 seconds. All right? 
So remember now, that's just the rating of the trans. Yes, Mr. Johnson. I, I, I was saying that th this would still be sufficient based on the time that yesterday would take to clear faults in most instances. Yes. So that's the justification you would use in selecting the 5K. All right. So we have looked at the at the 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 we have used the equivalent resistance in terms of finding the uh, the current that will flow through the earthing point. We have used that current and the maximum knee point voltage of your transformer to determine the, uh, the, 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 the rating of the transformer. But I also gave you at the beginning that the secondary voltage must, between, must be between 100 and 500 volts. So I know what the primary voltage is. I know what the rating is. I now need to find the sec a suitable secondary voltage. All right. So if we use um, 250 volts, because all I told you was that it should be between one and 500. So you have the flexibility as to what you will use. If we do that, then the secondary current, and note, because if I'm using the maximum, the 18, I'm saying that the 250 would be the maximum on the secondary, all right? So with that, the current on the prime, on the, on the primary, on the secondary, sorry, would be 122. All right, so this is just represent the turns ratio, right? All right, so we get 122. The loading resistor now, and this is this is the, the, the beautiful point. Know that I have selected, because remember, you know, this, this 250 isn't a value that I have been given. All we know is that it must be between one and 500. And I am selecting a value of 250 on the secondary so that my, 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 my secondary current will be large enough. Go back to where we started. Where we started is that we want to limit the current going through the second, through the earthing point. That's where you go. But we said in limiting that current, we are going to impact our relaying. So we have to find a way to balance it. So from 1.7, I now have 122 amperes that I'm playing with on the secondary. Yes? But the resistance, students, the resistance that we saw was in the primary. And that primary resistance was equivalent to the 4680. 46, yeah, to the 4680. So that is the impedance that is being seen in the primary. However, the impedance that I connect on the secondary, would it be on the square of the turn So in a sense, I will be connecting a 0 0.9 ohm resistor across the secondary of the transformer, which then is reflected as 4.68 kilo ohms. We get the picture now? I hope it's coming together. Yes, sir. Right, it's, still in black. it's still in black and white. <laughs> so you connect that small resist, that, that 0.9 ohm resistor. It's reflected in the secondary. 
So you, you now end up with a large, um, with a large um, earthing resistance, which then limits the current in the second, in the, in the uh, neutral for your, for your uh, generator, L reduces the fault current, but then produces a large current in the secondary, yes, or in the relay or to the relay that you can use um, for relay operation. So you have the point nine ohms. No. This is this is the resistance that's in the secondary. All right. And of course, you have all done networks one with me. So you know when I speak of distance, I'm not I, I, I use that to differentiate from resistor. All right. So the resistance in the secondary is 0.9. We have to get the transformer and its, its resistance, all right, based on the couple of losses. So that's 310, which gives us a resistance of 0.9, 0 0.194, all right, therefore giving me a loading resistor of 0 0.706. Of course, for obvious reasons. Obvious reasons. Um, the the that would not be a standard resistance value. All right. So you would take the standard value above 0.706. And why above it? Remember, we started out by establishing that the resistance must not be less than the reactants from the equivalent capacitance. So if you, if you took a value below this, then that value would have fallen below the 4680. Are we clear? So if you take the, the, the um, standard value above the 0 0.706, it means that that resistance in the primary will now exceed the point, which is that the current will be reduced below the 1.7, which we had um, established earlier. And so we are now able to produce high current in a secondary, which will operate our earth relay. Yes. We are able to produce this, this small current through the earthing point of the, of the generator. We are able to the low current through the, uh, the, 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 the generator windings. Yes, through the stator. And we are able to respond to our fault. So those are the principles. Which I so we are there. All
All right. For the reactants here, transformer, they're about 4%. Yep, but of course, you'll get that from the manufacturer. And that would um, equate to 0.25 ohms. And so the X to R ratio of your transformer would be 0.25 or 0.9. Note I use 0.9 because that is the resistance, right? The equivalent resistance. Now, in terms of, in terms of uh, transformers, um, I know now when we talk about transformers, we are only specify the per unit or the percentage rating. Uh, but in many instances, you will get the X to R ratio of the transformers, all right? And so in most data sheet, you'll you get that information. <laughs> so brave students, of, of you tech. You have taken on a very challenging module. You have taken on a very challenging module during COVID. And you remember the bargain we had at the end of semester two, all our GPAs must be over three, right? We had that, we had that discussion already, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Because I want to be on firm footing when I need to do it. You know, the OUR. Oh, by the way, how did you find that um, I think last week? Was it informative? I'm just declaring my hand. From all about it, but moving right along. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna hide my bias. <laughs> I just, I'm just as plain, you know. Right, cool. So, um, yeah, this is, this is it. Apart from just mentioning, you know, uh, the I think I gave you in a Recording in progress. And there are so the circulating um, the same principle applies in terms of you know like the transformer you are the the, the, the starting. Um, so we have O star star. These you can get from, you know, required to draw this now. And we have come to the aging semester. So apart from getting marked next week, Tuesday at six, right? And um, we have a discussion on Wednesday. I want to Anything you can have on as we said to you. That's it. Um, um, sorry. Uh, um, like 
it, you had said that you wanted to talk about lightning and race cars. That's one. And um, I saw something about B. I, uh, yeah. Um, I think it was for you to introduce or, you know, um, get some feedback on, on those topics. I could. Uh, in terms of BI, uh, the the text that I didn't I upload a text for you guys. I didn't. Victory, art and science. Yeah, that's there, right? Yes, yeah, so I have that book. Isn't it, did I upload Blackburn? Yes, you did. Easy reading. Black. Hold on, sir. Yeah, man. Blackburn. Blackburn. Blackburn isn't there. Blackburn isn't there. Don't you have a J, Blackburn? You're not seeing it? No, sorry, it's just the protective relay. Yeah. Just protective relay. All right, I'll, 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 I'll shoot you something on the uh, yeah. give you anything that I know, you know, it's not on this level, but it, since you ask, I certainly can provide you with that info. Um, as a matter of fact, the, the, the whole thing of BIL um, comes under high voltage engineering. I think I have some, some copies of high voltage engineering that I can give to you. Yeah, maybe I breach a copyright, but anyway, I don't tell anybody that. I realize you all have having earphones, so nobody else hearing me. I hope. Um, <laughs> recorded, no? We're getting this recorded. Uh, <laughs> we need <it> that. <laughs> okay, so that's it. I'll send you something on the IL and um, and uh, Arresters, all right? Appreciate it. Okay. Good one. Um, could you upload um, transfer protection? Transfer protection? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Okay. Take care. Bye.